this is Flying Squirrel, and it's actually my favorite trail at Doozy Hill Mountain Bike Park. I really like this trail, and I'm going to be reviewing it just as I do any other trail today. I'm going to go from top to bottom, but as always, we'll start with the stats of the trail. Flying Squirrel is a double black dirt jump trail, and it has the biggest jumps at Doothy Hill. That's why it's my favorite. Some of these jumps are 20 feet, and that's a really cool feature because most bike parks don't have tabletops this big. This trail is actually not part of Doothy Hill's flow park, and it's off to the side. It runs down the side face and winds its way to the bottom. Unlike many other trails, Flying Squirrel's 63 foot descent takes you through only jumps, no drops or technical features. So let's get into the actual trail now. So first, you ride up this wooden ramp and that's your start. You roll down it and then you go into a berm. This roll down is nothing special and it's made of rough planks so it is a bit technical, but it's not a real tech feature. After the roll down, then you go into a berm that banks slightly to the right, and then into your first jump. This is one of the most unique jumps at Doothy, and here's why. The lip is made of indestructible rock, and you can also roll it, but it's best not to. The rock lip kicks you pretty well and it goes onto a real nice landing. If you take the rock lip to the left, you're going to land back tire first, and if you take it to the right, you're going to land front tire first, so it's best to stay in the middle. If you do take each side, however, you should just control yourself because there's a berm right after it. At the time that I'm filming this review, the berm looks really nice, but on other times, or most of the time, it's not running really well. There's a bunch of braking bumps there because everyone messes up on the first jump. After the berm, you go into a small little tabletop jump, which is also hard to clear. You really have to boost this, and if you want to clear the jump after it, you have to land to the left side because the landing's at an angle. After this jump, you go into a big berm that banks right. This is another really great berm, and here's why. It banks a lot, and there's also no braking bumps on it because everyone cases the previous jump. At the end, it can get a little muddy and a puddle can form, so just be aware of that. After the berm, you go into another jump. This jump's the biggest one that you've gone through so far, and it's pretty much a tabletop with a slight gap. This lip is pretty much the same as it was last year, although it did get reinforced with a little bit of wood to make it a bit stronger. The lip size hasn't really increased, but the radius has. It's a bit smoother now. Since the radius has changed, the top is less squared off now, and there is a little bit of an ending at the top, and you can kind of just roll over it, although it's way less effective than a jump with a stronger lip. After this jump, you go into your next berm and it banks left. This berm has been severely improved because there's a drop up at the end. The braking bumps have also been fixed and it's a really big improvement. After this jump, you go into perhaps one of the biggest changes this trail has had, the next jump. This jump used to be a gap as you can see here and it was always really hard to clear. Now it's a full on tabletop, although the lip has been shaved away towards the left side, so it's best to say to the right. This jump is really awkward in some cases, but in other cases I don't mind it. It's really hard to maintain speed out of the berm, and that's the main reason I can never clear this jump. After a small little roller double, you go into two more berms, and they both bank in opposite directions. I like both of these berms, unlike last year, and I want to spend some time talking about each of them. The first berm banks a lot more than it used to, and they fixed up all the braking bumps, so it runs more smoothly than it did last year. I think this berm gives you a lot of speed, and you do have to brake at the end because it's a sudden bank into the next berm. The next berm is much tighter, and though they attempted to fix the braking bumps, I think they're worse than they were last year. First of all, there's a big tree root sticking right out into the berm. They either need to make the berm come down farther so that people don't ride over it, or they just need to cut it out completely. This berm would be a lot better without that, and some people even jump it. I don't think this berm is meant to be like it is, but the main reason that it's not that good is because once they fixed it, all their work just got washed down. Anyways, after this berm, you go into the last two jumps, which most people are their favorite jumps at Doothy, including me. I really like both of these jumps, and I'll talk about them individually. So now we have the first one. This jump has gone through a lot of change, as last year it was way more of a tabletop and there was also a wider landing. This jump has undergone a lot of change that's not in this video, but I'll briefly review all of it. So first, this jump was raised. What I mean by raised is that the landing was raised up and it was made into more of a gap. 
That's okay, but dirt eventually kept getting shaved out of the landing, and then it eventually got so small and more of a gap that they had to fill it with logs, and they also had to widen it because the dirt had gone from the side. They also had to put plants and wood to stop people from riding a hip on the side of the landing. Now that's not possible, although I really do like the way that the lip feels. The lip hasn't changed that much, although it has been cut a bit shorter. Overall, I think it's a great way to get speed, and I also think that it's a really fun jump to progress on now that it's changed. And now we've come to the last jump of the trail. This jump, you either love it or you hate it, and I'm one of the people that absolutely loves it. You see, the lip of this jump was actually made steeper for Sweet Lines event, and I think it really does a good job of boosting you way higher than the old lip. I'll compare these two shots from the old lip and the new lip, and you tell me which one I get more air on. As you can see, I get so much more air on the new lip just because it's a lot steeper. The landing hasn't changed at all, which means that the jump is the same size. You need a bit more speed to clear this jump than the old jump, and because it's steeper, you have to go farther with the same amount of speed. So now going back to the full trail, another reason that I didn't talk about in last year's video and why I really like this trail is because the corridor is very wide. In some spots, the corridor is almost 10 feet wide, which is almost like A-Line at Whistler Bike Park. Anyways, now I'm going to give the trail its final score, and that score is going to be a 9.5 out of 10. I think this trail deserves that score, and it's a fair score to give the trail too. I think that this trail is almost perfect, although some of the braking bumps on the last two berms and the first berm as well could bring it down a little. I like how wide the corridor is, and I also really think that it's really great to progress on because the jumps go from smaller at the top to bigger at the bottom. Pretty much all of Flying Squirrel's lips are also built pretty much to perfection, and it's really great to just session the entire trail. This is the trail that I spend most of the time at when I'm at Duthie, and I spend a good 4 hours here at a time. I haven't been going as much lately, but when I do, I'm always going to hit this trail, every single time. 